Hi guys, Dougie here with a new video and this video will be a PvP tier list video for Solo Shuffle. I'm not going to talk about 3s or 2s today. Uh, this is going to be Solo Shuffle and Solo Shuffle only and you already see a bit more tiers I would say than usual because I want to clarify a few things and uh, there is just no debate, no argument, no negotiation on a few things. Let's start right away. DH. God, please nerf it. Yes, God, please nerf it. It should not exist in current form. I don't care. I already made a video about it. Either nerf the CC heavily. It means literally just cut uh, the AoE stun by half. Or literally just remove one of, one of those things. Um, maybe fear just not being available in PvP at all would be nice. Maybe um, the banish being a bit longer CD, anything to nerf that DH. Survivability stupid to have one minute blur. Stupid to have darkness and nether nether walk being so easily taken by any DH. Like there is no way you're not going to take all those defensives. Plus leech, plus glimpse, plus eye frames. What is an iframe, for example, glimpsing out a CC or, for example, um, CC, like, I would say, avoiding damage or CC with a metamorphosis uh, press, for example. Those are iframes. Iframes are usually known from fighting games, but for some reason DH has that and there is no real other classes that have that. You can also say that Shadow Melt has iframes. But even that is bullshit anyways. So, again, nerf it. And I'm not a proponent to nerf damage. But if nothing is nerfed, at least nerf the damage. Anything. I would prefer to nerf the survivability or the CC. So you could actually fight the DH and they could do deal damage. That's their role. And uh, again, there should be a d melee, AoE, machine, whatever. If you want that, you can have that. But at least nerf an aspect if not just nerf the damage and be done with it i don't know anything there is too much it's an overloaded kit just doesn't die overall has the lowest death count uh, from uh, any dps but also has crazy burst crazy sustain crazy cc crazy crazy survivability crazy utility there is everything like baked into one class and that should not exist compare adh Havoc Demon Hunter with a Fury Warrior and just laugh it out all, uh, out loud because it's really just too dumb. It's just don't like it d should not exist in this current form. Anyways, rant over. It has been three minutes talking about the age, but whatever. Now let's talk about uh, Warlocks first. No, you know what? <sighs> I'm gonna go for the more OP things. Again, I think there, there should be a lot of nerves, but Rest of the Druid is one of them. Uh, God, please nerf it. Not in the proper sense of like the HPS, but I would say the stupidity of having three ounce being able to heal through a lot of things. For example, they can heal through line of sight. Can actually uh, is also just not on GCD, so it means that you can press all three um, with just one press, pretty much like you just spam it and it's all right. You can actually just heal too much. Uh, Cyclone being busted. Uh, because of all the nerfs to CC except Cyclone, uh, if Cyclone was nerfed to a 5 second CD, uh, CC for example, I think that would be more acceptable, but it's because of all the CCs being nerfed and Cyclone not, that is just not okay in my books. Again, I like Cyclone, I think it always existed in TBC, RAF and others, I would even say in RAF it was even more OP referral through it's having instant Cyclone from their um, procs. Like from the combo procs um but this is not acceptable just especially since the range the range is very high and uh, i think rest of the druid is just not okay in current form it just makes the games longer as well and in soul shuffle um i think it is just not fun to play against so for me it should be a nerf it's not like it is like op to the death it just is like compared to other healers there is just too much of a gap and I can fight anyone talking about Rest of the Raid right now. And don't get me started on 2v2. This is solo shuffle, but 2v2 it's even more obnoxious. 
anyways, uh, they could like swap a lot of things. For example, instead of have three ounce heal that much, like transfer that power towards other uh, aspects of the of the kit, so you could actually just not lose the HPS, but at least you have some skill form um, t towards what you're pressing but it is off gcd make it make it maybe on gcd then it would be acceptable make it not possible to be casted while bear form for example so you could actually go for rest of the druid and surprise him but now you just press triple three ounce whenever you're bear form and you're safe so again um also dispel protection no should not happen should be undispellable maybe because the heal the healing itself is not that great but undispellable, so you can actually dispel the important stuff. But anyways, um, nerf it. I don't care. Uh, what else? What could we nerf? What could we nerf? I'm actually okay with Sublity Rogue right now. Uh, I would say Auto Rogue is also a please nerf uh, its state, but not really like power wise. But I think I mean I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna put it there. No, I'm not gonna do that. Who else am I going to put on the... I think um, Windwalkers should be also in the Please God. I would say it's S+. I think if DH is nerfed, the next DH is Windwalker. But at least Windwalker kind of can die. And there is some skill expression as well. So you could see the difference between a very good Windwalker and a very bad one. Compared to a DH where the, the gap is really narrow. Although you still need to learn how to play DH. It's so easy to learn it that the gap is really really close to each other but Windwalker has that gap a bit wider but it's like again i think the second best melee with auto rogue and maybe sub a great subility rogue or a great assassination rogue but i would say like in general Windwalker is probably the second best if not the best once the age gets nerfed uh, so this should also be in the god place nerf it but again i think you should have a gap between that purple shit which is th and the s plus in my opinion anyways who else am i going to put that high i'm going to think because again there is a lot of classes and a lot of specs and i want to talk about a lot of stuff um i think should i so put i think destruction will just deserve s plus i don't know and i don't care how people actually talk about distro being it's a ranged spec gets focused whatever i say that destruction warlock in current form even though if you're trained you still dish like a lot of damage you're very tanky as well compared to other ranged dps you have mobility uh you have cc fear is actually the best like the second best cc in the game like i would say spammable cc um like it's a landslide away from polymorph in my opinion um, the only the, the thing that is actually like a downside for uh, Destruction Walk is actually that uh, it DRs with other fears and other like great CC of option like a Cyclone. So that's the negative part. But it just means that those two are just like that much ahead compared to Polymorphs and, and Hex, for example. Um, so Destruction Walk S, plus, I think it's really strong. I think it's maybe on par with Windwalker, left or right. I don't really care. Um, it also deserves a nerf, in my opinion, not really a nerf nerf, but a um, transfer of uh, the damage, how much damage you do. Um, you could really easily transfer like those rifts away and put it somewhere else, like for example Shadow Burn, Conflags, uh, Chaos Bolts, uh, Incinerate. But triple rifting is so easy and so devastating in general that it's just... I think it's not fun to have it in the game. I am a Destruction Warlock main in general, by the way. But I just don't like the, 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 the gameplay associated to uh, emulating someone and then triple rifting into Conflag and Shadow Burn spams and sometimes a Chaos Bolt whenever I can and sometimes an Incinerate whenever I can or I get a proc and I just do it. Um, it's, it I, I don't personally don't like I prefer the Mastery one where you get like full value of Mastery. But the four set kind of shoves you into the rifting. So uh, until they change it, I think it's partly because of this four set, but whatever. Um, but Destruction Walk kind of also deserves a nerf, but I'm going to give some separation between those two. Um, now let's, let's talk like class per class now, because I feel like I'm going to have a long video. I would like to keep it short. Affliction Warlock, in my opinion, 
uh, kind of needs a rework um, on how they deal damage. It's for me B tier because um, it is not as bursty and doesn't really decide games. It is facilitating games in general because of the undispellable nature. Again, ACC that can be dispelled usually doesn't get dispelled whenever there's an Affliction Warlock. So it can kind of help you with that. Uh, but the issue is, by yourself, you're not going to obliterate a team or you're not going to obliterate someone. Uh, it is like an accumulation of mistakes that the, the other healer makes that makes it a lot easier for you to win games. Obviously, Lobby also is very dependent and it means that Affliction Warlock can win games pretty easily or can lose games pretty easily and it's not always because of your influence but just because of how you, the nature of your your spec is versus causes you you have a way better time to actually use your spells than versus a melee but obviously versus causes there they have more defensives so you're going to have a bit less of that oomph that you would have on versus melees whenever you're free casting now the ideal situation is you have like a 2-2 two -two, which is me two melees two ranged and that is a great situation for you as an affliction warlock but as we know DH is actually very meta windwalkers is very meta so you will not ever really see like a 2-2-2 two -two -two situation um, it can happen but you cannot count on it so for me it's going to be B tier B tier doesn't mean it's bad it's actually like I'm going to I'm, I'm going to write average to good it really depends. It really, really depends on uh, who you're um, on who you're uh, talking to. I would say some people would say B is really bad. In my opinion, B is average to good. It really depends. Uh, I think C and D are the, the bad, the bad tiers. In my opinion, um, the Moji Warlock. I think it it has the the issue where they're not really carrying games. They facilitate wins like a demology, uh, like an affliction warlock. But uh, I do feel like it's going to it kind of it kind of dropped off because of how people know how to counter demology warlock these days. I would say it's A tier, which is for me A tier is kind of meta, kind of good, kind of you, you you can play demology warlock into everything and you can do fine. I would say even in melee cleaves, you can do somewhat good. Um, and you have the control of your CC. Fear is also a fantastic tool for Demology Warlock. You have pets doing damage, um, and a lot of damage is like surprising to the enemy also because they don't really know where it comes from. So you can win games because of that. But um, I think it's also one of the specs that just needs a rework at this point. It just needs somewhat of a change that makes um the module or just not as boring to play i think it's really boring to play uh, i would like to see more power towards the demology walk instead of the pets make uh, like a transfer ability where you transfer all the power of your pets into you so you can actually blast instead of like making a tyrant you make yourself the tyrant i think that could be very cool um instead of like that sacrificing soul thing where the more pets you have the more damage you have on shadow bolt i think that's dumb i think that it should be like a cd you can press every minute where you transfer your pets ability like not abilities but like stats onto you so you can be like the pet itself and you can do a lot of damage you can even have like extra abilities for example if you're siphoning from a fell guard you get a charge whatever if you're siphoning from a, a imp you would get like firebolt i don't know like anything that actually makes it more fun and more engaging but again i don't think they're going to do that but still i think it could it could be very fun anyways uh, let's talk about mage really quickly. I think uh, RK mage is for me in soul shuffle at least in soul shuffle S plus um, because of how slippery it is. It melee lobbies you cannot really reach an RK mage. It feels like often you are a bait target if you go for him. If you don't have a dispel, like for example, if you don't play with an enhancement shaman or a disc priest or whatever, it's very hard to punish an RK mage. Um, and I feel like often by going for arcane mage you lose a game. And ver versus ranged, I think you cannot punish as well an arcane mage because of how they can play. They can play the pillar very well. They can also blast very well. Um, they can bait you with uh, like sort of stuff. For example, you can they can ring of frost. You're going to either kick it or not, but they're going to do that anyways. And then they can blast with arcane surge into like all kinds of like touch of magi uh, like goes where you can actually do well, very well 
uh, as an okay mage. I think Forset also helps in immensely. I think if the Forset didn't exist, it, it would be S or A tier. But that's the four. The Forset actually just gives you like an opening where you can do a lot of damage as well. It feels like a fire mage to be honest, like from Shadowlands, while fire mage feels like arcane mage from Shadowlands, which is kind of weird, but it's still like this, I guess. Um, now let's talk about Frost Mage. I think Frost Mage in Soul Shuffle is not that bad. I think you do suffer versus, I would say, the Demon Hunters. Um, not really the Wind Walkers, but I would say the Unholy DKs and such. But you can actually have very good lobbies. I think versus Casters, you're not going to be ideal, that's for sure. But versus Melees, you're going to be a kiting machine. It's very annoying to kill fast. And if you are not able to kill fast enough, the second ice block is often enough to win you the game as a frost mage. You have the ability to do double ice block. And if you're very good at kiting and you're very good at avoiding damage, you can get to the point where you can have your second ice block without getting punished. Uh, I think also it's very likely that if you're not playing versus a purge team, you're going to do very well as a frost mage. If you do play versus a purge team, then you have to play in consequence. Um, you can again. I think difference between a very good frost mage and a very bad one is is the very bad one actually forcing his glacial spikes or not. If he's doing a glacial spike whenever he can and whenever he feels like there is an opening, it becomes instantly a way better frost mage than someone that is trying to spam glacial sp um, glacial spike and do doesn't get the damage out. Um, one thing is also for sure, frost bomb is fantastic. If you know how to use your polymorph, if you polymorph and someone like he dispels the polymorph, you get an opening where you can do an easy frost bomb, or you give an option to the enemy. Either you're going to dispel polymorph, or you're going to dispel frost bomb, but not the two. So that's also a difference between a good frost mage and a bad one, in my opinion. Fire mage, in, on the other hand, I think is should I say the worst um, spec in the game? I uh, Again, I think the worst spec is Augmentation, so I'm going to put it in C tier, but it's really a bad range spec right now. Especially in Soul Shuffle, where everything is around Burst, and you are someone that is very low HP. Because of the PvP town being nerfed, you're kind of... it's mandatory to go for that. It's still mandatory for, for going that, because, or else you're get, getting no damage on Ignite. So it's really a... You either do no damage and you have more HP, or you do somewhat okay damage and you have less HP. Um, by bef before, you had actually in increased damage, which is really high with less HP. There was no option, but right now there is an option. I would not go for um, the more HP because you have no damage, and having no damage as a DPS is like... Again, not that great, especially since Fire Mage is not of the type of a Frost DK, in my opinion. So, with the sense where setup is nice, but if you're setuping and you don't do damage, then what's the point? So, Fire Mage is C tier, in my opinion. Uh, let's talk about Evokers really quickly. I think Augmentation Evoker is D tier. I think there is no real debate about that. Um, currently, it feels like a tank, but plays like, like a DPS. Uh, until they rework it, I don't think they're going to do that though, but until they rework it, um, you, you will not see Augmentation Evoker being strong. It's also very likely that you are dependent on your teammates. If your teammates are doing good, you can do good as well, but then again, what, are, what, is, what is the likelihood you're going to go 6-0 compared to, let's say, a Demon Hunter? Uh, or a Fire Mage, or a Frost Mage, or a Destruction Warlock. Yeah, you don't have a lot of agency, and uh, that's not enough for Soul Shuffle being like relevant. Relevant, I would say. Devastation Evoker is S tier. <clears throat> I think it's really, really strong. Uh, Disintegrate is doing too much damage. Um, it's one of the specs where if you're clicking on details, you're looking at the damage proportions and how it's dealt, and you're kind of say like, what the fuck? I mean, what's the point? What is the reasoning for uh, Devastation Evoker only having like a, a very close damage proportion where everything is baked into one or two or three spells? Which is, my opinion, a bit dumb, but it is what it is. It is like modern gaming, I would say. At least modern World of Warcraft gaming, where everything is really tied to like a top four uh, spell. Um, 
like Disintegrate does a lot of damage, Eternity Surge does a lot of damage, uh, Fire Buff to Living Flame if you can, cast it. Um, I mean, it's it's strong, it's modern, it has double wall, which is something that a lot of specs would be jealous about. You have Insane CC, you can actually feel super tanky if you're playing well. If you're not playing well, you're going to get obliterated, but I think that kind of is the case for all the specs. Uh, Preservation of Ochre, I would say in Soul Shuffle, is not that great. But I would say since the buffs, they do feel like average to good. I don't think it's C tier. Um, it's it's alright. I think the issue is people can kite your healing. And um, you're very much CD heavy. So if people know how to play versus the Preservation of Ochre, it does feel like a 0-6 game for you. But you have damage, you have some agency, you have CC, you have some defensives. Um, overall, it's very hard to kick a Preservation Evoker. It's easy to bait one though, but it's very hard to kick one. So uh, I think for me, it's going to be average. I don't think it's that good, but I think it's very average. But it's very hard to put them at the same level as Fire Mage because I think Fire Mage is just that, that much worse, in my opinion. Uh, let's talk about Priest. <clears throat> I think Holy Priest. First, I think, is on the same level, if not a bit better than Preservation Evoker right now. Uh, you would say, what the hell, what happened? But I think the, the healing buffs that they got, like, every single time, kind of makes up for uh, the, the mana uh, problems that you could have as a Holy Priest. Uh, you have tools, you have CC. I think the only thing that you're lacking is, like, a real damage reduction ability that you can press. Like, for example, Pain Suppression has for the, the, uh, this Priest. But I think... Um, it's really like lobby dependent. If you have like a lobby where you can have pre of mending being popped left, right, and center, and you are you're having a lot of like uptime on it, I think that could be a very good lobby for you. But a lobby where everyone is spread out, where your pre of mending has like no value, that's probably the worst lobby possible for you. So I think it's really dependent on that and dependent on a lot of factors. Again, I think. You're just one of the healers that are very high likely to die uh, once you have your spirit angel down. Uh, or like the, the spirit form, excuse me. Um, once spirit form is gone, you're generally the target. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the soul shuffle nature of the spell uh, spec. I think in trees you're a bit better because of the coordination and the CC that you can pro provide. I think in Soul Shuffle, the issues are a bit more glaring. Um, but it's easier, I would say, than Preservation Evoker, where you could literally get kited by a bee, like a ranged one. Like, a Frost Mage can easily kite a Preservation Evoker, which is not that good. Uh, and I mean kiting in the negative sense. They're kiting your heals. <sighs> so, let's talk about uh, DK. I think DK is a good uh, conversation. I think Frost DK is not the worst spec anymore but i would say it's really the, like not that great i tried frost dk recently i think uh the the whole sentiment in soul shovel is that it is a sub rogue i would say it is a um disguised uh, disguised uh, sub rogue but with a bit more consistent damage but a lot less um reliable Burst, I would say it's also super easy to kill, so they're like a very gimped sub rogue. But the only thing you have is like crazy AoE situations where you could actually do a triple obliterate like 200k, 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 and you can actually like win games because of that. But I, I may remind you that people know now how to play versus Frost DK. Most likely, if the healer doesn't know how Frost DK works, they're going to get obliterated. But at higher elo, at least, I wouldn't even say high high, I would say even at like normal elo, you're still going to have difficulties doing the stuff as you should do. Like, again, I know there's a difference between like a good Frost DK and an extremely good Frost DK where he knows every single setup he's going to do. But that's so rare that I cannot put them like higher because of those guys. Uh, you, you have to think... Like Frost DK itself, the potential of it, and that how many games you ha do you have to play Frost DK to make it work? And I feel like it's for me C tier. And Holy DK has been nerfed. They do play more of a like plague build kinda. 
Uh, you can also play like still the normal build where like the Clown Shadows build, you can still play that. Um, but I think it has been nerfed a bit too much in this current meta where I feel like they are A tier. They are not that crazy anymore. Uh, I think your CC is still there, so you can carry games just based on CC. But then again, I feel like there's a lot of game, like a lot of specs that can do the same than you. Um, so for me, I think it's going to be like a deserved A tier. They are very squishy versus physical damage dealers. Even versus, even versus magical damage dealers, you're going to be very squishy as well. You're highly killable. Uh, I think the issue is that your damage is a bit conditional in the sense where if you're playing around dots, you can play versus a Holy Paladin and he plays the right CD, uh, C, um, PvP towns. You can actually just do nothing. I feel like you can get countered pretty easily. I think, yes, you have your Silence, yes, you have Asphyxiate, yes, you have Blinding Sleet, yes, you have some damage that is sometimes unavoidable, but I don't think you have like great lobbies overall all the time. I think that that, that is already gone away since all the nerfs that you got as an Holy DK. Um, now let's talk about Warrior. And I'm going to go on a rant. I do feel like um, Fury Warrior is the worst spec in the game, melee wise. Um, it has no identity, it has no purpose. The damage that they have, any specs has that. Uh, the burst that they have is manageable, kiteable, and observable. Um, their CDs are not that impressive. Uh, I feel like the four set is completely bugged because it never crits for me while having 75% crit so it feels a bit weird that even with 75% crit because of the four set and because of your inner your inner crit uh, like abilities that you have it feels weird that you're not critting on blood buff but that's my opinion it feels like bugged but also i think the damage is not that great i think um their their um overall uh, anti-healing like mortal wound aspect that they have with with um uh their pvp talent feels very conditional because if you're playing with a bm hunter and they have like a um they have a mortal wound pet they just remove it like every single time because again they, they apply mortal wound every single attack and it's very hard to stack it i think overall fury warriors should sh just have a normal a mortal wound and not stackable and then base your balancing around that i think having a 36 percent uh, mortal wound like potential is gimping their ability to buff fury warrior in my opinion um i also think the uh, healing that you get as a fury warrior is dumb if you're playing a fury warrior and you're playing versus the arms warrior tell me who has the most healing out of the game and it's not like Arms Warrior doesn't deserve like self heals or self shielding. I would say with ignore pain, it's not that. That's not a problem. The problem is Fury Warrior has a lot less healing than Arms, and that should never never happen. The same for Retribution Paladin. They have like no healing. Like they have no self heals, no uh, real defensives like in a healing form, which Fury Warrior should be actually excelling. If you compare Fury Warrior to a Havoc Demon Hunter, it's, it looks like a bad joke. That's how I feel. And yes, I am a Warrior main. Yes, I am biased. No, I think I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I think it's truly how it currently sl stands for Fury Warrior. I, I think people that put Fury Warrior higher actually never played Fury Warrior or never really understand what Fury Warrior does. To actually put them higher because it feels again, I'm crap. I'm going to say it like Van Rookie's super tease and, and all. You 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 guys actually need to play Fury Warrior just once. Just play it or even compare it on paper between Arms, Havoc Demon Hunter, and Fury Warrior, and tell me who is actually the subclass because it's really a subclass. That's how I feel. It feel it doesn't feel like a spec to me anymore it feels like it needs to be reworked to a point where it's acceptable to be played i feel like this is a insult this is dumb i feel like 
even if you add the crushing blows from back in Shadowlands, it would still be bad. That's how bad it currently is for Fury Warrior. Their talent trees is completely like in shambles. I feel like it is just not fun to play a Fury Warrior. I do. I don't feel like it's it's entertaining as well. It feels like it is a worse version of any melee spec right now. So do a rework. I don't care. PVE PVP. I feel like Fury War is just lacking an identity, which is the berserker of the like World of Warcraft. It should be like feeling like you're a berserk, and for me, it feels like you're a chicken these days. That's how I feel. Arms Warrior. I think Arms Warrior is all right, but it's on the same category of Demology Walk, where you're not really carrying games. You're just there for your utility. It's nice to have an Arms Warrior in your team. It has the best MS in the game with Sharpen Blade. Um, but with Sharpen, but uh, I think it is just lacking, I would say, the the real bursty burst that some classes has. Uh, the, you're never really going to create reliably 300k on a Mortal Strike, but you could actually create reliably on a Rising Sun Kick as a Windwalker. The same for Demon Hunter. Uh, they have like crazy AoE all game long. They have CC. I feel like the CC of Arms Warrior is very limited. They have Ignore Pain and they have like Impending Victory and other stuff which you can survive. I think Arms Warrior doesn't really have a difficult time with surviving. That's not the problem. But I think CC wise, you are the worst of the bunch, I would say. And I would say also damage wise, you are sustain wise okay. But it's like a lot of pads. I think rent damage is pad. I think deep wounds is pad. I think overpower is okay. It does more damage right now than before Shadowlands, for example. But so for some classes, that amount of damage is kind of bad. Um, like not bad, but pad. Like padding. You're padding the 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 meters with like bullshit. For example, rent and deep wounds has like fifteen percent damage, uh, propor like proportions compared to the other spells. And it's only ticking for 15k. It's not like it's ticking like very fast as well. So it's not that good. It's really not that good. And yes, you can AOE them down with Playstorm and having multiple deep wounds on everyone and such. But it's still just not it. Uh, but I'm not going to ask for a, for a buff because I think it's really meta oriented. Uh, in the sense where if the meta is suiting for arms warrior, it's going to jump to S or S+. Plus. But I feel like it's not never going to be really meta whenever demon hunters are like rampant, um, druids, arcane mages, destruction warlock. All of these are like very annoying for arms warrior to actually kill. Destruction warlock in a vacuum, you can eat them, but you have to remember it's soul shuffle. You have to remember the healers don't know the assignment, for example, sometimes. Uh, where you as an arms warrior, you have to sometimes line if you want to be able to uh, like like eliminate the destruction warlock. Which often or not is not enough to to win the game because you have to line the healer and at that point you're getting destroyed. So again, I think A tier. Uh, it could be S to be honest, but I'm going to I'm going to keep it on A because uh, I think Unholy Decay is A. So if Unholy Decay is A, I think Arms is also A. All right, uh, let's talk about Retribution Paladin. I think Retribution Paladin is also A tier. Um, you can carry games though. Uh, but I think the issue is like lobbies. I think the issue is like on a s deep level, the, so the self sustain is not okay. Um, like, I mean, the self heals are not okay or the off heals are not okay. I think it's way more um, entertaining for a Retribution Paladin to be able to heal your allies very quickly or very efficiently and lose a bit of damage, but at least you have like that. Uh, capacity of off healing but right now it feels like everything is around damage and your hodge goes and and your wings uh where uh, your off heals are just not significant enough to actually um justify the gcd so i do feel like right now retribution pardon deserves uh a tier though because of the meta and you can kind of win matchups that you should not be able to win because of hodge and how it works um, but yeah, I think, I think Retribution Paladin is better than ARMS, in my opinion, in my books, but I could be biased to that, so again, <clears throat> there, you could maybe say to me and tell me that I'm biased, but I do feel like Retribution Paladin has more tools 
two win games, two carry games than an arms warrior, in my opinion. Um, Holy Paladin. Let's talk about Holy Paladin. Oh, I didn't talk about Disc and Shadow Priest. But let's, okay, okay. Let's talk about Holy Paladin first. Holy Paladin is, in my opinion, a bit better right now. I think it's S tier. Um, they have great healing. They have great utility. They have multiple buttons to press. You can actually carry games as a Holy Paladin. You can also get destroyed as a Holy Paladin. Uh, if you're playing a castle lobby, that's the worst feeling as a Holy Paladin because your Bob does nothing and you don't have Spell Warden like a Retribution Paladin, for example. But um, overall, you can win games um, that you should not be able to win. You can steal games as a uh, Holy Paladin, where I think as a Holy Priest, you don't steal games. You kind of win games that, that are kind of deserved to win, and you lose games that are kind of deserved to lo uh, lose. I think Holy Priest, for example, is a very honest spec, where Holy Paladin and Rest of Druids are dishonest in the way of how they kind of win games. On a Druid, you can basically, like... Uh, cyclone everyone every single time and you can actually like avoid a lot of damage while holy paladin they can just say look i'm going to bop you and you're going to go ham versus those meaties um so just for that reason i'm going to put them at s here again i could change it at the end but i do feel like with the resurgence of holy paladins with on the ladder if you're watching from a couple weeks they get higher and higher compared to other heals that were higher than holy paladin um, let's finish up uh, of the priests. I think this priest is going a bit down. Uh, I think do think it's better than preservation and holy priest, so I'm going to put them at the A tier. But on the lower end, um, I do feel like uh, this priest um, lost a bit of everything. Um, I think it's way better in like twos, for example, where you can play super aggressive and you can play like literally a DPS. But I think with Demon Hunters being that strong, uh, with Windwalkers, with just overall the meta, it just doesn't suit Disc Priest that much. You don't have reliable CC as well. I think Fear is a way too risky move to go in and fear the healer, for example. Uh, you could fade into a death, into a fear, so you actually don't get CC'd, for example, like a counter fear on you. But it's still a very hard thing to do. You kind of have to be self-aware of that. I think I do think Disc Priest is okay. You can carry games, but often or not, it just it will feel like some games you cannot win because of Rest of Druids, Holy Paladins, or other shenanigans in the game. Uh, Shadow Priest, I think, is not that bad. Um... I want to put them higher, but again, I will try to follow the philosophy of I'm not going to judge it because of the best players. I think on average, a Shadow Priest is a bit better than Affliction Warlock because of how they deal damage and how they can deal damage. And their CC is on a great level. It could actually go for A tier just because of that. CC is king. I do think since CC has been nerfed, Having more CC than everyone is really noticeable. So I'm going to put them at A. Again, I'm very sorry. I think on the lowest end of A. Because in all honesty, you can be like shut down pretty easily. But not everyone is going to do that. I do feel like the CC itself is warranting A. Uh, the damage is high enough to make people have to go for Shadow Priest. And I think in general, if they're going for you, you're going to add more damage with Catharsis, for example. So, overall, I do feel like Shadow Priest is A tier, and it kind of deserves A tier, in my opinion. Uh, but if you're, like, a very, very good player, you could actually go higher. But if you're, like, let's say, 1800, 2k... I do feel like you can deserve A tier. The only thing that is very annoying is if you're playing, um, let's say, double DH lobbies. And that can happen. But... At the end, you know, I could I could even like put even more rows, right? And that's the gap that it, there is between Demon Hunters and the other specs. But again, I, I want to make it a coherent um, a tier list where it's easier to read. But um, yeah, you cannot really compare everything with Demon Hunter because it's literally in the God Please Nerf it. So this is like... Or like it's out of bounds. You 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 we you cannot reach that level anyways. So it's very hard to compare it to yourself with a demon hunter. 
Alright, um, let's talk about... Let's talk about the Hunters. I think BM Hunter is in a great spot because of the four set and actually just not getting nerfed. Um, I kind of changed my mind over the course of the like the matches and the days and the weeks. Uh, I do feel like BM Hunter kind of is an S tier spec, but I think um, it's very hard um, in the sense where you can actually get like very much counters um, and a good lobby consists consists actually versus uh melees and a very bad one would be like with a havoc demon hunter like a havoc demon hunter with a sub rogue for example with a wrestle druid it becomes immensely harder for you to actually win games um i think a bad lobby could also be a holy paladin like popping and freedoming the uh, enemies i think a bad lobby could also be like mages that novas your pets a uh, resto shaman like rooting your pets so you can actually just do nothing and then static field toteming the pets away as well so you again don't notice it but your kill command doesn't do anything um i think overall you, your carry potential is very high your damage is very high e even if you're trained it's still there so there is that at least but i do feel like bm hunter um how they are currently uh, they deserve S tier. Uh, I personally play a BM Hunter. I really like it. Uh, I actually have no real lobbies. I'm going to say, oh damn, man, I wish I didn't play that lobby. Uh, while, for example, Arms Warrior, I have lobbies like this. I think as a Shadow Priest, you can have that. I think as a Holy DK, you can have that. But as a BM Hunter, I think you're pretty fortunate with how lobbies are working in Soul Shuffle. Um, MM Hunter, I think, is... I'm going to put them at B tier. I think it's quite average because it's very easy to shut down. Yes, the damage is very noticeable. Uh, yes, you can carry games because of your damage, but people are not going to let you do what you're going to do. Uh, and I think it's also very easy to use your CC whenever he's going doing, uh, doing a rapid fire because that's how uh, easily the damage is going to be. Uh, so you have to stop it. And I think aim shot. You can play around it, you can also line it, you can also just CC him, you can also displace him, you can be very annoying, you can also disarm him. Um, I think MM Hunter is like miles easier to stop than a BM Hunter. Well, BM Hunter, if you're like training one easily, you're going to deal the same damage. But an MM Hunter, if you're training one, they're not going to do a lot of damage. And also, people are like noticing True Shot and they're going to stop you on True Shot. Now, let's talk about Survivor Hunter. And like I said, I'm not going to judge based on the best players because I feel like not everyone is like a best player. And again, I make my tier lists for the 98%, 97% of the population, not for the top 1%. Because there is no real reason to do that. First and foremost, I will have shit views, first and foremost. But also... Um, it's not representative with the current form of PvP, which is, again, the 97%. And those are actually needed for the 1% to matter. And right now, 1% doesn't really matter anymore uh, because of that. Because of the, the casual players and the uh, veterans and the players that are actually loving PvP leaving the game because of balancing. But that's another issue. We talked about it in multiple videos. Survivor Hunter is going to be... B tier, but it's good. It's not average. It's good. Uh, the thing is with B Survivor Hunter, I think Survivor Hunter has potential, but it gets heavily, heavily countered in lobbies. You can have lobbies where you're absolutely doing nothing. And then you have lobbies where you're going to top damage. You're going to do a lot of damage. They cannot stop you. Uh, the CC is very natural. As a survivor hunter, you can easily CC a holy paladin. You can easily CC, uh, let's say, a uh, priest. You can easily CC a resto shaman. But you are not going to CC, like, everyone easily. Like, for example, resto druids. You can, you're going to have a tough time. Um, your damage is also not that great whenever you're going to be the target. Because you're going to try to kite. You cannot face tank everyone. You're also very squishy. I think overall Survivor Hunter can do good, but it's way too lobby dependent. Um, and also, I think the skill level that you have to reach to make it good is 
um, on a higher scale compared to other spell specs. If you compare Survival Hunter to a Havoc Demon Hunter, you're going to suffocate with the amount of things that you have to do as a Survival Hunter to actually be on par with a Demon Hunter. Um, but again, it's unfair, unfair to compare them like together, but still, I think it kind of deserves to have a comparison with Survival Hunter. Um, let's talk about uh, Druids really quickly, because I think we already talked about of Druid. For all Druids, in my opinion, C tier, um, maybe like on the same level as Frosty came, maybe a bit higher than Fire Mage actually. Um, they just kind of die. Um, they kind of have to play around Walt, Walt Attunements, which is the PvP talent uh, that makes whenever you're going to Cyclone, it turns you into Cat Form, and your next combo spender is also going to spend a Feral uh, Frenzy, which adds more damage, and also 5 combo points again, so you can actually just continue the Onslaught. I think the issue is survivability, your damage is... It's high. Uh, again, you can buy it for 300k. So I also got bitten 400k by a feral druid. But I think uh, it necessitates a lot of skill to, I, I would say, uh, become somewhat respectable. Um, I think it's not an easy class to play, but also it's not really rewarding to play one currently. Uh, normally it would be, normally it should be, but right now it is not. Uh, they need a rework on their defensives. They kind of need something reworked. I would say PvP talents, it should not be in its current form. I think it should be also reworked. I think Cyclone, if you nerf it for rest of the druids, it also should be nerfed for Feral Druids and for Balanced Druids. So overall, uh, I think it just ne needs a whole rework. And uh, hopefully with War Within, we get something uh, around that um, uh, energy, I would say, towards uh, Feral Druid. I am a sucker for Druids. I, I, like, again, on Classic, I play Druid. On SOD, I play uh, Druid. On Wrath of the Lich King, I do play Druid. So I want them to be better so I can actually play them and uh, have fun with it. Currently, in, on retail, whenever I'm playing Feral Druid, I'm thinking about Feral Druid from Wrath and saying myself, like, why am I playing retail Feral Druid? I, I, ju I just don't like it. So, again, uh, hopefully they do change something. Um, sub, no, but Balanced Druid, excuse me. I think Balanced Druid, although it is trainable and stoppable and you can play around, I do feel like it's still S tier. Um, you can win games by yourself. Um, you, it's very hard to carry games because sometimes you're forced into bear form. Sometimes you're forced into using your CC on the wrong uh, time, I would say. Um, but you can win games with, I would say, um, being there uh, because of a root beam, your damage with like Eclipse and going Scenario Alignment, for example, uh, for example uh, can make you win games as well. Uh, your damage is really high. It's actually very hard to counter it. The only counter towards a balance rate is actually forcing him into bear form. Um, but even then, if you, if they're like doing their go, they're not going to go bare form. They're going to just like say, "Look, you're going to sit down, or I'm going to sit down." But one of the, one of us is going to to go down, right? They're going to die. So again, trying to do like a DPS meter race with a balance rate is never going to be good. Uh, I could kind of compare it with like demon hunters with how they deal damage whenever they're going to do a go. Uh, the com the the difference between a balance rate and a demon hunter is balance rate has a timer while demon hunters actually deal damage all the time that's the kind of difference between those two <sighs> all right let's talk about shaman i like to talk shaman elemental shaman is also going to be s tier i want to put them higher but i do feel like you are not always going to decide the game. Uh, it also needs a rework. I also despise what Elemental Shaman currently is. I sometimes have fun, but it is because I'm playing like builds that are kind of what the hell kind of thing. Like, for example, the Lava Burst build where you're going to do 200k's with Lava Burst, for example, with Ascendance. Um, but I do feel like uh, if I have to compare it, Demon Hunter, like Demon Hunters, Devastation Invoker, and Elemental Shaman, they all have like three big 
uh, like similarity uh, that there, there is no stopping on their damage like their damage is always going to be continue uh, they're always going to be like doing damage and doing like absurd amount of surprising damage uh, even whenever you're thinking look you're safe no you're not uh, a proc can do like all wonders for elemental shaman for example so I do feel like uh, currently it is S tier. Uh, you just don't carry games all the time. But I think it's very lobby dependent. But overall, you're not casting much. Even if you're getting trained, your damage is not going to change too much. Uh, you're going to panic, that's for sure. But if you're knowing how to play Elemental Shaun, you do know that even if you're trained, nothing will change in your damage, in your actual damage towards the enemies. Um, Enhancement Shaun I think is also very close, I think it's C tier, I think it's C tier, maybe ahead of Fire Mage, um, yeah, I think, I think it's close, it's actually like on par with Feral Druid, uh, defensively they're very bad, uh, I think damage wise they are not that impressive, it does damage, but it's like, compared to other specs, it does feel like it's the same, um, it just is like, tied to a lot of random stuff um not even talking about like the doomens build like i'm talking about like a lava lash build with like elemental blasts and and lightning bolts um often it is tied towards crit which you're not building towards so if you're critting something from your rotation you're going to make them cry if you're not critting it feels like it's very manageable but again, uh, I think it just needs a rework. Already discussed it multiple times. There are also, like, weirdly enough, the C tiers and D tiers are all specs that need to be reworked. Affliction Warlock also reworked. Uh, MM Hunters needs to be reworked. I think Holy Priest kind of needs a rework as well. Um, I think you have um, Demology Warlock needing a rework. Elemental Shaun needing a rework. Uh, I would even say Devastation Evoker. Shadow Priest to a certain extent. There's a lot of specs that actually just needs a rework. Uh, or a modern gaming kind of feel. And I don't feel like some specs have that. And I think Enhancement Shaun is one of them. Like off heals wise, it's okay. But you have to sacrifice damage for that. Uh, if you're doing damage, that's okay, but you don't have defensives, so be careful. If you're getting stunned, it's GG's if you don't have a trinket. And if your healer is stunned and you're stunned, well, you can already go uh, slash AFK, you're going to lose. Um, but anyways, you can win games. Again, it's not like pros cannot win, I would say, with Enhancement Shaun. The issue is the consistency is way lower. Um, you're going to struggle way more as Enhancement Shaman than any other spec above Enhancement Shaman. Resto Shaman, I think, is actually going to be on par with Holy Paladin. And now you're going to notice, but who is going to be the S plus healer? And I'm going to say Resto Druid is the S plus healer, but I think it should be nerfed. So that's why it's on the top rank. Um, it's just the best healer, so again, the question is already answered. Resto Shaman, I think in Soul Shovel currently is not that bad. It actually does a lot of damage. If you're playing a bit around your Lava Burst, you can actually do a double 120k Lava Burst, which is, again, 240k in just one, like, second, because it's just one GCD plus an instant. Um, with a cast time plus an instant damage, I would say, from Lava Surge. You can actually do a lot of damage and participate with kills, but you have to play around that. If you're not doing that, then obviously you're going to suffer. But I think the difference between a good Resto Shaman and a bad one, they know when to play aggressive. Um, also, your totems, if you're playing well, you can do okay. But yes, of course, the lower you are on the, the um, MMR range, I would say, the worse it becomes for you because people are not noticing totems, but it goes both ways. They are not going to destroy you, your healing tide totem, so you you can even cast them that in front of them. They're not going to touch it, so it means that your HPS is also going to be higher. Just the only issue is overwall is going to be kited around. Uh, they're not they're not going to stand into it, so that's the issue that you can have as a Resto Shaman. But personally, I do feel like Resto Shaman deserves an S tier. Uh, I think it, it, it comes a long way. I think it's because of all those stats that you can have currently, uh, the four set doing well, the uh, buffs that you get like constantly, and the damage that you can actually provide, I think it does deserve that rank. I would say below Holy Paladin though. Um, 
Mistweavers. I think Mistweavers, um, I'm going to talk about the most popular one, which is fist weaving. I think it's S tier. I think the lower you are, the worse it is. But the higher you are, the more obnoxious it becomes. Um, I do feel like overall it's like top four heal healer. Uh, I think it's ahead of Disc Priest currently. Um, I think it really is like lobby dependent. But normally with current meta, it does feel okay because there is Demon Hunters, Windwalkers. You have Arms Warriors, Paladins, you have Retribution Paladins, you have BM Hunters where you can just hit the, the pets to heal very easily too. So uh, I do feel like it deserves S tier, but again, healers, the meta is really weird. Some like it's, I think it's a POV kind of thing, where if you're playing Disc Priest, you would rate yourself lower. If you're like Preservation Walker, you're going to rate yourself lower. I think if you're a Fist Weaver, you're going to rate yourself lower as well. So again, bear in mind, it's it's not easy to rank them, um, but I do feel like currently Fist Weaving is on par with Resto Shaman and Holy Paladin. Oh, rogue specs. So those are the most annoying ones. Uh, video has been long, but again, has been a while. I didn't make like a big video, so hopefully you did learn something. Uh, Sublity Rogue is in social for a bit nerfed. Um, it's still okay. <sighs> Realistically, for ninety-seven percent of the population of PvP, Sublity Rogue is more around eight here. But on the top ones um i would say the higher you go the higher you are the better you are it becomes more proficient but i think low elo i would even say mid elo like 1800 to 2k i do feel like somebody rogue kinda is a dud and doesn't game win games often you, the difference between a very good one and a very bad one is like S tier and D tier away from each other. Like it's really crazy how a sub rogue, if they don't know what they're doing, they're going to be utterly useless. But someone that actually plays like very well to the T, they are going to feel like unstoppable. So again, I think it's fair to put them at A tier because I think overall, if you're playing a bit of sub rogue, you're learning sub rogue, you're going to do better than I would say the average sub rogue but you have to put energy into it and that's the one thing that is actually a requirement to sub rogue it's not a easy spec some people would say it's like brain dead but in my opinion it is not and i think it kind of deserves a like an a tier to to me uh, assassination rogue i think i'm going to put them at a tier as well for the simple reason where they are lobby dependent you have lobbies where you're going to probably lose because of how they can deal damage and how you cannot avoid damage like a sub rogue or like an auto rogue but you have lobbies where you can literally do your whole shenanigan with like shadow dance into king's bane for example and like wreck someone um so just for that reason again i think it's like on par with sub rogue where the difference between a very good one and a very bad one is like miles apart I think the average one that puts more time into it can actually win games and the one counter at least the few counters you can have they are not very popular like preservation evokers holy paladins uh, retribution paladins they are very popular but you don't need to play around death mark anymore you play around your king's bane which is a one minute cd so like overall with your shadow dance try to play it together um so i think it kind of deserves eight here Outlaw Rogue though, the last one, <sighs> this one is always going to be the, the hardest to do because I feel like, again, the disparity between the best ones, which you should be like, God, please nerf it, or the worst ones, which are like D tiers, it's also very, very like far away. But from what I've seen and what I've played against and what I feel whenever I try to play Outlaw, it does feel like it's better than sub rogue or assassination rogue. I'm going to put them higher. I'm going to put them below the healers. But I would say if you put more time into it and you play auto rogue, you can actually feel like a S tier spec. But if you're playing the first time, the second time, the third time, you're going to say, what the hell? Why is it S tier? 
but I think it's like a purely a perspective of you have to learn it, know your your cooldowns, know how to do your opening. Sometimes you can win with your opener. Know how to do your opening. Um, I would say CC and uh, damage uh, rotation, and go from there. Uh, also try to CC on demand of the R. So you can actually have a lot of uptime and also just be very annoying towards the healer. So this is my tier list. You would say, oh my days, too much A, too much S. But I feel like really, if you nerf druids, you nerf demon hunters and you kind of uh, buff the outliers and nerf the outliers, you would have a fantastic meta where everything is being played. But right now it feels like it's Havoc, Demon Hunter, Flight. Like instead of Dragonflight, it is like, team in flight which should not be the case i think it is a whole season of demon hunters where it's obvious there is a problem but nobody is actually like responding or awakening i would say towards that problem so for me right now this is my tier list again thank you for watching please do debate in the comment section below be and try to be civilized so we can actually have a discussion again I'm open to it. I try to respond to everyone. Sometimes I know I don't because I'm sick or whatever, but I try to always catch up my comments. So again, do try to comment. I will try to respond to you guys. And again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye.